Hello everyone and welcome to our Open SAP course titled Build Resilient Applications on SAP Business Technology Platform with Amazon Web Services. My name is Divya and I am a development architect at SAP. In today's unit, we would be covering a scenario of building integration scenarios. We would be sharing a demo or a sample service. Together with you, we would be building the scenario using SAP integration suite, and we'll also be showing steps to monitor the applications. So let's zoom in into the scenario, the sample scenario. Many a times you would have use cases where you want to connect to SAP applications, whether on cloud or on-prem, connect and get the data from the SAP applications, convert it into a file format of your choice, and post it into Amazon S3 or any object store. To build such a use case, you can use the SAP integration suite, which is the EIPaaS solution available in SAP Business Technology Platform. In order to build the scenarios, we have many APIs exposed from SAP Cloud Applications, which you can also discover and explore in SAP Business Accelerator Hub. We would be using one such services. You could read this data, connect using OData, SOAP, or REST API. You could transform this data using many of the transformation capability available in cloud integration capability of SAP Integration Suite. And finally, connect to Amazon S3 using the available, one of the available adapter called Amazon Web Service Adapter to post this data as file into Amazon S3. So let's zoom in into the integration flow. In the, is, in the integration flow that we would be building today, we will be modeling it as a timer job that you can execute to run periodically, or you can execute to run at once as soon as the solution is deployed. You can set some initial values in order to get the data, for example, setting your keys or anything else. You could connect to the external applications, whether from SAP or non-SAP, using the request reply step. We would be using here a connection to via the OData services, which is also linked in our presentation. Then you can use one of the transformation capability that is available within cloud integration. In this case, we would be using the convert to Excel CSV file format. And finally, using the Amazon Web Service Adapter to post this data into Amazon S3. So let's zoom into all of these individual parts before we jump into the demo. So first step is to create an integration package. An integration package allows you to group or bundle different integration services or scenarios that you want to build. An integration package can contain different types of integration steps. For example, it can integrate, it can contain an integration flow, the one that we'd be using in the demo today. You could be a REST API, it could be a SOAP API that you're creating. This could even be a message mapping that you can reuse across integration flows or it could even be an integration adapter, something that you would have used in the previous unit to deploy the Amazon Web Service Adapter. So within the integration package, different types of integration scenarios could be modeled. And within an integration flow or an integration scenario, you can use multiple steps. You can configure these steps based on the need of the scenario. We would be covering some of the steps that we would be using in the in this course today. So first service or first step that we would be using is called a timer job. Using the timer job, you can schedule an integration flow to run at specific time of the day or to run once, or you can even have advanced operations defined. The next thing that we'll be using is another step called as content modifier. Using the content modifier, you can set up the message headers, the payload, or even read these informations from the incoming messages. You can even set message properties that you can use within your integration flows. Another such integration step that we would be using is called as the request reply step. This allows you to connect to an external applications. In this case, we would be connecting to the API sandbox available in SAP Business Accelerator Hub to connect to an OData API from S4HANA Cloud. The next thing is the different sets of transformation-related capabilities that is available in SAP Cloud Integration Suite. 
In this case, we would be using the XML to CSV converter. And the XML to CSV converter allows you to convert any XML content into CSV format. You can define your X path. You can define whether to include the headers or not. We will be using some of these properties in the course today. Finally, an any integration flow comes to the end step. And from this end step, you can invoke the Amazon Web Service adapters or any other adapter to connect to your receiver system. And as a usual, you can save all your steps at any time. And once you deploy, this is when the integration flow would get activated into your integration suite tenant. Not just building the integration flow, we also have capabilities to monitor the message processing end to end. So you can navigate to the monitor tab. And in here, you can view when the job was run, what was the status of the job, whether it was completed successfully, whether there was any error. You also can trace the flow to see where, in which step the integration flow was executed. You can also view the processing time of how much time each of this job took. So these are all the different modules or steps of the integration flow that we would be building. And now let's quickly jump on to the demo. So for the demo, we have split that into the unit two. In our previous unit, you would have already set up and activated the integration suite service within the SAP Business Technology Platform trial environment of yours. We also hope that you had gone into Amazon S3 and created an S3 bucket and a folder that we would be using in the step today. You also would have gone to IAM of Amazon services and set up an Amazon S3 key and secret that you would use to connect to the integration services to Amazon S3. Next, you would have gone to integration suite and in here you would have discovered the Amazon Web Service adapters that is available. So you can go to the Discover tab. You can type in AWS and then get the Amazon Web Service adapter. This adapter is available with all the license of SAP Cloud Platform in SAP Integration Suite. And you can go to the SAP Software Center and download the adapter pack. And this adapter pack from the SAP Software Center, you already would have installed into your integration suite tenant. All of these steps were de described in detail in our previous unit. So if I finally were to come to the integration suite, the monitor tab, you could see here I have one of the integration flow already started, which is the service for the Amazon Web Service adapter. If I come back to the overview page, go to the security materials. I had already configured the S3 secret and key to connect to Amazon S3 from integration suite. So now with all this prerequisite, hopefully already done by you as part of the previous unit, we will start building the integration service for today's unit. So for this, let me quickly move on to my integration suite tenant into the design tab. So you can click on this hamburger icon, go to the design tab here, click on integration. Next thing you can do is click on the create button. In order to save some time, I have created a quick reference. We also would be sharing the detailed steps with you so that you can follow this as part of the exercise. So first thing any integration package needs is the name of the package. You can type in a name, let's say Open SAP AWS course. We can also provide a short description to the package. You can alternatively use any integration package that you may already have. Click on the save to create this package. Once the package is created, we navigate to the artifacts tab. In this place is where you can create the different integration flow. We, for this exercise, would be creating an integration flow and this is what I'm selecting now. As before, I have to give a name to my integration flow. So let me quickly grab the name. We provide the name as post documents to Amazon S3, which is also the name of our unit today. I click on OK to create the integration flow. Once the integration flow is created, I can click on the item and wait for the canvas to be loaded. You could see here, this is our integration canvas. You could expand it. You can go to the full screen. 
Let's quickly edit it and start building the scenario. So here, first thing that you see, we have the sender and the receiver adapter. Since in this case, we do not have a sender system connecting, but a timer job, I can just delete this application, uh, the sender module. I also do not need a start module. What I will be adding now is a timer job. So let me type in to the search step and select timer and add it into my canvas here. And if you see here, I can expand this to view the properties. And if I go into the scheduler, this is where all the various options of the timer that comes in. I can schedule it on a day. I can schedule it on a recurrence pattern or in the advanced pattern. For now, we will go with run once. Once this is done, I can select this arrow and connect my start and the end button. I can click on the plus option. And from the dropdown, I can search for the content modifier step. As for the readability purposes, it's always good to give a name to each of the steps. So let me give a name called initialize value. Next step is I have to give the message header. I want to pass in my API key to connect to my S4HANA Cloud API sandbox. And then I have to pass in the name of my API key. This value, you can get it by navigating to SAP Business Accelerator Hub. You could see here, this is the API, the bank detail API that we would be using in the course today. In here, you have the option to click on show API key. You can copy your key and come back to the integration suite tenant and specify it in the source value. So once the, in the initial values has been set, we add the next step, which is the request reply step. So you could either select one of the recommended step. You can also search for the step. If you do not find it, I select the request reply step. We give a name to the step as before. And once this is done, I select this a receiver system. So for this, I can search from the participants, select the receiver system, drag and drop it to my canvas palette here, select the steps and connect them together. The moment we do that, you could see the multiple adapter option comes in. Within Cloud Integration Suite, we have many types of adapters. For the course today, we would be using the Odata. We would be connecting using Odata V2. Next, we have to specify some connection properties. For example, the endpoint of the service that we would be using, the entity that we would be referencing, and the method that we would be using. So in order to get all this detail, let's go back to my Business Hub Accelerator screen. If I go to the configuration view, you could see here this is the sandbox URL, which is what I would be using in the call today. I type in and copy paste it into the address field. Once this is done, I can go to the processing tab. And here I have to give in information about the resource that I would be using. So for this, if you were to go in, you could look into the API references. You could see here is the resource that I'm going to connect to. In order to save time, I've already copied these values. So let me just paste this here. So I specify here the resource path. Next is we can specify the query operation. To keep the data set small for the exercise, we are only fetching 50 records. And that's all the configuration that is needed for the connections part. Since we have to pass the header API key that we are setting in the previous step to be passed to the receiver system. So here we are also saying pass in the API key in the header field as well as in the metadata call. Now, once these two properties has been set, and we have the connections to the API sandbox system established. For the next part, we will add in the integration steps for transformation. So for this, we select the XML to CSV converter. And as usual, we give it a name. So we give it a name called convert to CSV. Under the processing tab, we can specify the path from which we have to get the data. So here I give the path as API bank detail, which is the name of the entity and the data type, which is the bank detail type. As we explained, you can also select whether you want to include the headers or not. I select the option to include the headers. And with this, 
you could see how easily I can transform the data from XML into the CSV format. With all these steps, we are left with one more step, which is to connect and post this data to S3. So for this, I select my end system to the receiver. And here you could see I can select the Amazon Web Service adapter. I'll be using S3 for the, for the course today. As before, I go to the connection screen. And in here, I can give the name of my bucket, the, the ski alias and the secret alias as you have configured in the previous unit. So for this exercise, we have it as open SAP I suite, AWS iSuite given. I can give the name of the API access key and then also the name of the secret. In case you're wondering where these values has been specified, you could see here, if I come to the monitor tab under the security material, this is where all these values were onboarded. And in here is the name of the bucket that I'm using. So these are all the parameters that I specified in the screen. Next, we come to the processing tab. I specify the operations that I have to perform. In this case, it is a write operation. Give the name of the directory, give the name of the file, also the content, so which is text.csv. Once this is done, we can click on save to save all our changes. You can also click on deploy now to run this integration flow. And this would trigger the integration flow into the integration suite tenant. In order to monitor this application, we can come back to our monitor tab. So if I were to come into the tab, you could see here this integration flow was run. As you could see, in this case, I had a failure. So let's see why I got this error. You can see here I'm getting the error for the OData responses. So we wanted to show to you how this errors looks like. So you can see the OData request call had failed. I could not set the parameters properly. So let's come back to my integration suite tenant. You could see here in the initial value, this is where I was setting the header called API key. If I were to go to the fetch data, and select this OData connections. If I go to the connection, this is where we had the service. We had the request header to be passed. And you could see here in the metadata, we were not passing in the header field. So I now specify the API key header, click on save, click on deploy. And let's see in the monitor tab how the scenario goes this time. So I come back to the integration suite tenant as before. Let's look into the service. And this time you could see using the monitor capability, I could view what caused the error and as well as fix it. Now you could see here this time the execution was successful. So let's come back to my S3 bucket and see whether the data is in. So I go to the folder demo and you could see here the data has been posted. So with this, I hope you had a glimpse of the demo scenario and you could build this integration services together with us. So what did we learn in the exercise today? You would have seen how to develop an integration service or integration iFlow, as we call it, using SAP integration suite. You would have seen how to configure the Amazon Web Service Adapter in SAP integration suite, how to connect an SAP application to the Amazon Web Services and the various services available under Amazon Web Services. In this case, we focused on S3. You would have seen the connectivity options like the OData adapters that we used. You would have seen the different transformation capability like the XML to CSV converter that we had used. And you had used all of this to build an end-to-end -end sample scenario that solves the use case of posting documents to Amazon S3. You also had seen how to use the monitor message steps to identify errors like we did in the course today and also to fix it to build the scenario successfully. As further reads, we want to give you exam links to few of our course materials, the Discovery Center missions, tutorials, also linked to the SAP community and our blogs. I hope you liked the session today and we hope to see you again in our next unit. Thank you, everyone.